Our friend and colleague Urban Meyer joining us right now to weigh in on this. And Coach, first of all, I'll just ask you your reaction to the news today. Oh, it's great news. It's great news. Most importantly, for uh, obviously, the only good news is for the players. You know, everyone else, I think it's it's good news, but for the players, it's great news. And as I was thinking and, and just thinking about the decision that was just made, I actually spoke to the president of Ohio State, Dr. Christina Johnson, and she's a former student athlete. And she made the comment to me that's going to, I'll never forget this, because she played the sport. She played sports. The opportunity to go compete with your teammates and go compete for a championship, she'd give it all up. Everything she's done to do it again. And so that's why, in my opinion, why did this thing go down? Because you have leadership like that. So I, I'm so happy for these players. So now, as a football coach, those who are in that position in the league, and certainly a position you know quite well, have a challenge on their hands of, of getting their teams ready to play. Having been in that position really recently, what in your mind is the biggest thing you'd need to do to get a team from here today in mid-September to being ready to play in late October? Well, the, the fundamentals look very poor to me on Saturday when I watched those games. You know, I, I, I saw poor tackling, poor blocking, and special teams at times looked horrendous. And, and you could expect a little bit of that early in the, in the season, but everyone's routine has been blown apart. You didn't have spring practice. You had stop and start during training camp. And I know Coach Dave's, you know, been brought up the right way, and I know his belief, but it has got to be absolutely on point with fundamentals here these next few weeks. I mean, as far as ball security, blocking, tackling, you know, they've done a lot of things, but it's been without contact. So the fine line is how do you get your team ready? And I know exactly what's going through their minds without getting players hurt because you have to – if the first time you get hit or the first time you go live is on in, in the end of October, that's going to look – it's not going to go well. So how do you get your team ready with contact in these next four weeks? It was interesting to watch that BYU-Navy game, as much of it as I was able to stomach before it just got out of hand. And Kenny Amatololo said afterwards from Navy, look, we – did not have as much contact as maybe we should have in, in hindsight. What's the balancing act, you think, as a coach, of, of working your guys back in, of getting them into a position where they are ready to play, where they are ready for, for contact, but also kind of bring it in gradually? How do, you, how do you thread that? Well, that's a great question, and I would always challenge my staff and say, tell me, for example, Larry Johnson's our D-line coach. How many reps do you need to get these guys ready don't go over that reps, but we have to get you those reps. So I would challenge every one of our coaches, you know, for a tough Borland who's been around for three, four years, that's much different than some young cat coming in, a, a, you know, a young freshman or sophomore player that's not played. So I would go through in great detail the returning players or new players, and I would put them in, in those live competition if they need it. If you're a returning vet, I'd get you a little bit, but not as much. So it's all about the, it, you can't say – you know, we need this many plays because you don't know what kind of team you have. You have a very, you know, Michigan State is about as far from Ohio State as you can get. New staff, new coach, uh, new schemes offensively and defensively, and a team that struggled. The Ohio State's got veterans back uh, in the same systems in place. So I would imagine a school like, I just use Michigan State because they had so much transition. Their plan to get back is going to be much different than a school like Ohio State. Coach, I, I hate to deal in hypotheticals too much with you, but I'm just interested being in the position that you're in. I, I'm going to bring up a couple kids you recruited, Y. Davis, Sean Wade, who have both opted out of this season. But there are cases throughout the league, you know, the Rondell Moores, Rashawn Slaters. I mean, you can go down the list of Big Ten players who have decided, I'm just going to focus on preparing for the NFL. To what extent would you as a coach, and maybe removing yourself from the particular of those guys you know, but just kind of speaking more generally of, hey, now you've got a chance to compete for a national championship. You have a chance to play another season with your teammates. To what extent would you revisit it? Again, I know you have relationships with those two guys, but just in general as a coach with players who had decided not to play. Well, I've spoken to their families, and you're talking about not just great players, but great people and uh, moms and dads that are very involved uh, in, in the right way. Uh, very new, you know, very strong families. Yeah. So I imagine they're going to revisit it. I'm not, I, I don't know this for sure. Uh, but I, I just go back to what our, pre think about what the president of Ohio State said. When she was a college athlete, she said she would trade it all in 
to go have another opportunity to compete with their teammates for a championship. And I, I share that same thought. So we've been fortunate to win several championships. And to me, that's a game changer. You know, if you're, if you're playing on a team that has no chance or, you know, the harsh reality is, okay, I understand that. But to be in that locker room where they'll get a ring and to put your arm in arm with uh, people realize you've done what you, you know, you want to do as far as win championships. I, it's hard for me to put a, a value on that. And I just, I, I, I'm telling you what our president said is something that will never leave me. Yeah, really interesting stuff. And again, it just speaks to the value of college athletics. And I think something that all of us who work in or around it have kind of understood for years. It'll be interesting to see how some of these players react. I want to get kind of your final thoughts here, Coach, on the process and of getting to this point. What's the biggest thing that stands out to you as to everything that the Big Ten has been through to arrive at this morning? Well, the power of player, the power of Justin Fields, the power of those families, and I just, you know, I'm biased because I think Gene Smith's as good as there is, our president, Ryan Day. And I, I give Scott Frost credit. I give, I understand James Franklin was very instrumental in this. That just keep, you know, when someone tells you, uh, we're not going to do this, uh, if you in your heart believe that's not right, keep swinging. And be respectful, but keep swinging. And I think it was the prototype for a how to go try to get something changed that everyone felt was not right. So they kept swinging. Of course, science changes every day with this darn uh, COVID. And so I, I think everybody acknowledged that, you know what, well, we maybe made a mistake. I haven't heard that yet, but we made a mistake by shutting it down too early instead of buying time, allowing the science to uh, get involved in these decisions. And obviously, uh, it was. Dr. Borcher is the Ohio State team physician. I texted him this morning. He's also a former student athlete. I told him he's the best I've ever been around. And with great uh, uh, admiration, I appreciate on behalf of the players, they get the chance to play now. And again, Dr. Borcher is going to join us here in a little bit on the show, heading up that medical subcommittee along with Sandy Barber at Penn State. So we'll get some insight from him as to what changed here. Urban, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And looking forward to working with you here in the days and weeks to come as we get set for the 2020 Big Ten football season. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you.